The reviews of the Radeon RX 6600 XT are in, and the performance is impressive for a 1080p card. However, it was priced more like a 1440p card, and only a few were available for that MSRP. Is the pandemic really the reason for the higher MSRP price? Let's get into it. In the reviews of the RX 6600 XT, the data shows that its performance is similar to the RX 5700 XT at 1080p. They also show that it is typically better than the RTX 3060, but falls short of the RTX 3060 Ti at 1080p. But it's the MSRP price at $379 that has people upset. That we get 5700 XT performance for $20 less two years later. And that we have hit stagnation. And then there was the typical launch day story. Stock was almost non-existent. E-tailers like Best Buy and Amazon either sell out immediately or never had them for sale. In North America, Newegg sold what they had through the shuffle. And Micro Center had only 2,000 cards spread over 25 stores. And now the cards are already showing up on eBay at inflated prices. So AMD's idea of having significant stock available for North America is on the order of a few thousand cards? I just can't listen to the lies anymore that come from these companies. When launch day results do not match what they say over and over and over again, it's just lies. I have been so down on the GPU market, which is why I haven't made many videos about GPUs this generation. That and the fact that I can't even get one at MSRP. It is so depressing and frustrating, and every time I started a GPU video, it just turned into a rant. To stay positive, I just had to walk away and turn to other tech that I can buy. Getting back to it, in the reviews, one comparison that I don't hear discussed is the direct comparison to the card that it is replacing, the RX 5600 XT, which had an MSRP of $279. Yes, $100 lower. To put it another way, the MSRP for the replacement card for the 5600 XT increased by 36%, or the new card is only $100 more. Sure, it's 30 to 35% faster, but it's not much of a generational upgrade when you have to pay for that additional performance. And where were the direct comparisons to last generation's 1080p Kings like the 1660 Ti or the 1660 Super? Why do we see so many comparisons to the GTX 1060 from five years ago? What's the headline here? You can upgrade your GPU for twice the performance. However, we're going to make you pay for that additional performance five years later. Why don't most of the reviewers talk about that? To me, that is the bigger story. By not providing the comparisons to the previous generation, AMD and Nvidia are admitting that unless you're upgrading from a five-year-old card, that it is not worth it. I think it is so very telling that AMD avoids any comparison to its own Polaris cards in the RX 480 and RX 580. Why are they not trying to entice those people into upgrading? Anyone who was looking to purchase a 60 series card back then would cross shop the 1060 and the RX 580 and the performance of those cards were very similar. However, you could typically find on sale the RX 580 for less money and also get 8GB of VRAM versus the 6GB for the 1060. Those cards sold very well over the last 5 years and have been great for 1080p gaming. But if they showed that comparison to the RX 580, then it would become very obvious that the RX 6600 XT provides you twice the performance for twice the money. Not a very good headline, and AMD has done well to deflect and distract to ensure that that does not get reported. By the way, if you like videos like this, hit the like button and subscribe for more, and let me know in the comments below your thoughts, why don't they compare this card to last generation 1080p cards, or even to their own Polaris cards. Now there are a lot of AMD apologists out there and they will say, well, it's crazy times right now with silicon shortages and material price increases. It's the inflation and that it's not their fault. But is that really true? Imagine if we were not going through the pandemic and supply was fine and things were as they were before the pandemic. Do you think AMD would have released the RX 6600 XT at that same $279 as the 5600 XT? No, they would not, and it is because that is part of AMD's long-term GPU pricing strategy. Allow me to explain. AMD's pricing of this card is another example of where they just price the card based on how well it performs against NVIDIA cards. Now I have talked about this several times before in my Big Navi vs. Ampere series of videos. It's their slot-in pricing strategy that they have been practicing since 2019. 
That same strategy allowed me to accurately predict that they would charge $9.99 for Big Navi way back in March of 2020, or seven months before the announcement. There is no pricing competition in the GPU market. NVIDIA sets the pricing structure, and AMD slots in based on the performance. AMD has determined that it is more profitable for them to slot in versus actually competing. What's that old saying? If you can't beat them, join them. And it's a strategy that's paying off. Now both AMD and NVIDIA want you to believe that this is all due to the pandemic and part shortages and shipping cost increases and material costs going higher, but it is simply a smokescreen to get you to accept the new pricing structure. And I can assure you that when all those excuses are gone next year, you can expect that the suggested retail price for the RX 6600 XT will not magically drop to 279. AMD wants these prices to stick and they will follow Nvidia all the way to the bank as this new pricing structure is very lucrative for them. AMD is not competing for the mainstream market, the high volume 60 series market. They tried that with the Polaris GPUs and that just didn't provide the margins they are now looking for. They are focusing on the higher GPU segments because they have a big problem. You see, they simply don't have the manufacturing capacity to supply the mainstream market. AMD can only source so many wafers from TSMC and the desktop GPUs are the lowest priority items behind Epic CPUs, DDNA based GPUs, PlayStation and Xbox APUs, Ryzen CPUs, mobile CPUs, mobile GPUs, and then finally, desktop GPUs. So you see, desktop GPUs get whatever wafers are left over. This was not an issue when they used Global Foundries for manufacturing. Think about how plentiful Ryzen CPUs and Polaris GPUs used to be and how competitively they were priced. Back then, they offered great value for the money. The capacity constraint came into play ever since they moved all of their products over to be manufactured at TSMC. It's actually ironic to think that the desktop GPU is the lowest priority and yet could be the highest margin device in their portfolio right now. However, if AMD won't compete with volume to take market share, then they will simply make as much margin as they can based on how their GPUs perform against NVIDIA GPUs. Also, think about all the excuses about material cost increases and shipping costs and inflation and everything else they throw out there and regurgitate over and over again. Let's just call those the universal set of pandemic excuses or USOP. If that explained the cost increase of GPUs, then shouldn't we also see corresponding increases in every other PC component? Have other PC components raised their MSRPs by 36%? Next time we'll talk about how AMD and Nvidia are using USOP to muddy the waters and then dive into some of the details to explain why and how that has significantly changed the pricing in the GPU market today and how that may still be true even when the pandemic is over. Thank you all so very much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.